Hey guys, Susan Thomas here. Welcome into the Jewel School Lunch Break Live on YouTube. I am so excited to share this quick and easy lunch break project with you today. We're going to be making a leather sparkle bracelet, which is super cute, super fun, and so easy. You could do it on your lunch break. Um, now this is the bracelet. I'll kind of show it to you guys right now. It's super sparkly. We do have a kit for this bracelet that's available online and I know we have about 60 of them left. It's not a lot, um, but if you guys want to pick up the kit for the bracelet, it's really affordable. It's $34.99. Includes everything you need plus extra materials. Um, the number, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you because it's kind of a long number on, on JTV.com is going to be JSYT7. 3A, and I know Julie's going to drop it into the comments, so if you guys want to pick that up, which I know you will after you see this and see how easy it is, uh, go for it. Let's see, I see Kim is watching, and Linda is watching, D is watching. We're going to give away two of these bracelets today, the one that I make, and also the one that's already made here as a sample. So if you guys let me know who you are and where you're from in the continental United States, we're going to send you one of these beautiful Druzy Agate sparkle bracelets. Um, okay, let's go ahead and get started because I promised you we'd get this done on our lunch break and if I blab too much, we're never going to get finished, right? So what you're going to need to make this bracelet is 1.5 millimeter leather. Now in the kit, we're providing you guys with two yards of it, which is way too much leather, but you're going to want some extra to make another one. You're also going to need kind of the most important part of the bracelet, which is this Druzy agate. Now to make an eight inch bracelet, which is a pretty standard length of this size bracelet, you're gonna need all 27 of the beads in the strand. If you wanna make it a little shorter, um, you're gonna be able to shorten that up by using less beads. And if you wanna lengthen it, I'm gonna show you how to make an extender clasp. There's also gonna be uh, 200 jump rings, which is also way too many, but um, they're seven millimeter jump rings. You can choose to go silver tone or gold tone. And then we're gonna give you an assortment of buttons. Of course, you only need one button to make the bracelet. I'm going to go gold today just because I want to, um, but you're only going to need one button to make the bracelet. So you get the bright gold, the oxidized gold, and then two really cool oxidized oval shaped silver buttons. And as far as tools are concerned, I just got a ruler out here just to kind of keep myself honest um, because we're going to go eight inches and then just any type of a cutter that can cut your leather. You could even use scissors. Um, let's see what we got here, folks. Uh, I see Kim is watching, Olga's watching, Mary is watching. She loves those beads. Aren't they awesome, Mary? I mean, just so gorgeous. Now, we've got 126 people watching right now, and um, uh, you can use any 8 millimeter round beads you want as long as the hole is big enough to fit on the leather. Does that make sense? So, this is 1.5 millimeter leather, so you're going to want at least a 1.5 millimeter cord. Of course, I've knotted my leather up into a big knot. I don't know how I did that. I was trying to make it into a really cute little circle for you guys so it looked pretty on the, <laughs> pretty on the table. All right, so what I have here, let's go ahead and get started as long as you guys are ready. Hope you got your sandwiches ready. Um, let's go ahead and get started. I've got two meters of this leather, so what I'm going to do is just cut it in half. Now, do I need a full meter of this to make this bracelet? Probably not. But I'm going to go ahead and start with that, and then we'll see how much I have left. So definitely enough to make two bracelets. If you guys have any questions, um, please go ahead and post them in the comments here. I am watching the YouTube uh, channel here, so I'm actually watching myself. Apparently, I'm slightly in the future. So I'm seeing the comments about 15 seconds after I do what I do. But I will look over there and try to help you guys. All right. Interestingly enough about this bracelet, let me pull it off of here and show you guys. You actually start at the end to make this bracelet. And I'm going to unbutton my button here. You actually start with the button. A lot of times when people are making stuff, they always start at the other end because it just seems to make sense. And then um, they have difficulty finishing things. So we're going to start at the end with that button and tie a button onto our leather first. Um, now, I had one question. Somebody says, I'm living in India. Can I get your bracelets? And the answer is, yes, you can buy this kit because um, anybody can buy the kit. So go for it. Try it out. Like I said, there was about 67 of them left at the beginning of the show. And I think it's a great price and a great kit. All right. So I'm just going to pull the button onto the leather like this. Can you see how I did that? Let me get this out of the way so, it's so you guys have a good background. All right. So I just pulled that on, and I'm right at the center of the 1.5 millimeter leather. It's super easy. Um, not cotton cord. This is leather cord, but you could definitely do this with a cotton cord, folks. There's really no rules about this bracelet. It's really easy, really fun. Any cord will do. 
All right, so what you're going to do first is just tie a knot. One of my favorite things about working with leather is if you can tie a knot, you can use leather to make jewelry. So this is a great beginner project. It's also a great easy project for those of you guys who are looking for just some easy jewelry to put in your booths at um, you know, springtime craft shows and stuff like that, or just an easy gift to give that everybody's going to love. What I'm doing now is I'm just tying that basic knot right here underneath the button. And I'm just taking my time pushing that knot up to the button so that all of the strands are kind of not overlapping and looking kind of yucky, yucky. I'm making them kind of pretty. I'm doing what my friend La Laura Gasparini calls fiddling a little bit just to kind of get that knot right up underneath the button and nice and tight. So that's all I've done. I just tied a basic knot and you can see it's tied right there underneath the button ready to go. Okay, so then I've got all that cord left. I'll lay that down. Now, this uh, next step, you can see, if you look at this bracelet, it totally looks like a zigzag. But it is not a zigzag. It's a trick. Um, it's uh, basically about putting the beads on one side and then the jump rings on both leather cords. So what you're going to do to start it is you're going to take one leather cord and you're going to take one bead and you're going to pop that bead onto the leather cord. And if you have any trouble getting it on, you can just take a flush cutter and just splice the end of the leather. So I put that on, and then I'm going to grab both cords together. I'm going to take a jump ring. And yes, you can use more than one if you want to. You don't have to use just one jump ring. Kind of depends on the look you want. I'm going to pull that jump ring down. I'll hold it still, I promise. See? Just like that. That's on both cords. And then you're going to split the leather again, and you're going to go on the other leather cord. Let me just splice my end here. Grab a bead and pop it on. So at the beginning, it doesn't look like much yet, but I promise you it's going to look really cool. All right, so next up, let's see. Grab, let's see if I got a bead. Yes, yeah, so now I'm going to grab. So the only thing you really have to remember is your order. You want to go one bead, then one jump ring, then one bead, then one jump ring until you get to 27. So I've got two jump rings on there. And the interesting thing is they, they kind of actually, when you put it together, they actually kind of snuggle together a little bit, so it looks really cool. All right, next up. So Charlotte says, the reason why I got into making jewelry is because you make it look so easy. I tried and I made it and they turn out great. <laughs> you know what? It is really easy. I, I, I just love working with leather because it really is so easy. And this is one of the most simple projects, but one of the most impactful projects I think you can make with leather. So, oops, that guy does Susan, not want to go We had a question there. from yeah. uh, Christina. All right, got a and question from Christina. And she wants to know if you can use cotton cord. Yeah, I just, I just said that, you guys. You absolutely can use cotton cord on this project. This little guy, I need a little, I'm going to need to get a little, I want to show you something really quick, guys. I'm going to grab a chain nose or a tweezer nose plier here. So you see the speed, it's just, see the cords coming out on the other side, but it's just barely, and I'm struggling just a little bit to get that through. You can do a couple different things here. Um, you can either grab a, f well, I'm going to try to do that. You can either grab another bead, <laughs> or you can um, splice your cord again. Or you can get a bead reamer and just kind of um, ream out that bead just a little bit. I was trying to grab it with my tweezer nose plier just to see if I could get it to pull through, but it didn't want to come, so there we go. But nor nor normally, I would just use a bead reamer. All right. DB says it, this bracelet looks easy enough. It is. This, is. this is definitely a great, easy, fun project. So now you can sort of see how things are coming together as I'm working with the beads. And we're just going to kind of go through this. And if you guys have any questions about working with leather, if you have any questions about jewelry making in general or anything, just go ahead and ask me. But uh, any one millimeter, one and a half millimeter cord looks great on this bracelet. And any beads with larger holes, they don't have to be rondelles. Although I like, as you guys can see, the way the rondelle really makes a nice zigzag look on this over a round bead. Um, Stephanie says it's blue is my favorite color. Woo, hey, Mar Mar let's see if I can say that. Maritza, Maritza D, said she almost missed it. Um, Marina wants to know, can I use unfaceted beads? Yeah, I mean, guys, remember, 
I'm showing you how to do a design, like a, like a technique here, but the design is up to you. You could use round beads, you could use big beads, you could use small beads, you can use silver, you can use gold. As long as the beads will fit on your leather, you can do it. It's awesome. It's easy, because that's, that's the part that's kind of up to your personality. So I'll click that on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make right at, I, this one I have here is an 8 inch with a 1 inch extender. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make you guys a 7 and a half inch with a 1 inch extender. Oh, let me show you something. So I went on here and now, so this will help some of you guys who are just signing in. See, if I went on the same leather cord, I wouldn't get the same look out of this. Does that make sense? So you have to make sure every other one, you go every other cord. Um, B wants to know if it will work with stretch cord. I have tried it on stretch cord and it does work not really quite as well. I think it works better with like a thicker stretch cord. If you guys are familiar with stretch cord, there's like the elasticity alonga type, um, or sorry, the alonga slash, uh, let's see, elasticity and alonga are two different kinds. So the elasticity is more of a thicker stretch cord. If you use that, I think it works a little bit better. Um, she's asking, oh, that's a good question. Cindy just asked me if I'm opening the jump rings as I go. Actually, Cindy, I'm closing them. If I'm feeling these jump rings and your kid will be like this, they're just a little bit off. They're not quite closed all the way, and so I'm closing them up as I go. I, it's kind of like I always say it's all about the little finishing touches, but the bracelet will look nicer if the jump rings are closed. So I'm closing my jump rings as I go. They're not open very much. It's not going to matter. You can totally leave them as they are. But um, I am somewhat of a perfectionist, <laughs> so I'm closing them. There you go. Don't laugh at me, JJ. JJ's out here with me. He is. F there is somebody besides me out here. There's actually f one, two, three, four, five somebody's out here with me. Takes a village, folks. <laughs> it takes a lot of people. <laughs> but any questions, you let me know. Um, Judy is watching, and she said th she, th she thinks this would look fantastic with freshwater pearls, and you are correct. It would look incredible with freshwater pearls. As a matter of fact, I think Julie might even um, drop some freshwater, large hold freshwater pearls into the chat there for you guys if you want to pick some of those up. All right, so you can see this is just, I mean, I would love to have as many questions as you guys can have because there's really nothing else to this aside from stringing at this point. So that's why I think it's a good lunch break project because you could actually eat your sandwich and do the project at the same time. So that's important to me because I literally do not like to miss lunch. Does anybody else like to miss lunch? No. <laughs> it's, ter it's a terrible thing to miss lunch. It actually makes me kind of grumpy <laughs> to miss lunch. I didn't miss lunch today, don't worry guys. I totally had lunch. But in this kit, I will let you guys know that um, there's plenty of jump rings. You actually get 100 of the gold and 100 of the silver tone in the 7 millimeter. So if you wanted to double your jump rings in this project, you totally could do that and still have plenty left. You get enough leather to make two bracelets, at least. I keep doing that. Enough leather to make two bracelets, so you have lots of extra there. So it's literally just whatever beads you can find to fit on here. Any large hold bead will work. You guys can do this. Um, now, King's Hillbilly says, ooh, I love flesh blue with freshwater pearls. Can you mix colors? Yeah. Actually, do you guys like my necklace? Look how cute this is. Sandra Younger made this for me. She's one of my, um, she's a really fun designer that comes on Jewel School. And I actually thought about bringing her Naughty Do It All today because I thought it would be a great way to hold on to these beads. But um, she actually made this necklace for me. And it's just so much fun with the colors. This is hand knotted all the way around with the Naughty Do It All board. So yeah, multicolor would be beautiful. Hey Debbie, Debbie's just joining in from Oregon. So if you guys are just joining in, what we're doing is we're making a leather sparkle bracelet, super easy lunchtime project for you all. And essentially I tied the button on the end right there. That was the very first piece with an overlapping piece of leather. So I started kind of like that and tied a button on the end. And then I've just been stringing these beads on here, and I'll come to this spot. You just string a bead on one side of the leather. Then you string a jump ring on both pieces of leather. And I'm using gold. And 
and then you string a bead on the other side. Right, next up. So see how it makes kind of a cute little zigzag? And in order to make an 8-inch bracelet, it takes just about uh, 27 beads. If you want to go with 7.5, which I'm doing today, you're going to use 26 beads on the project. And I'm just kind of pushing them down a little bit as I go. See how i got a little space there? If you don't do this, you'll end up with space on your bracelet at the end. So, And also, I think it makes a prettier zigzag. One user wants to know if they can use spacer beads in place of jump rings. Yes, uh, spacer beads. Uh, somebody asked if we could use spacer beads in place of jump rings, and that's that's a really good question. Absolutely. If it'll fit over both pieces of your leather, you can use it. And I actually have done that. I, there's some there's some really cool uh, different sizes of spacer beads. I've also used oval jump rings instead of round jump rings, which works. Um, I've tried spacer beads. I've tried oval beads. I've tried it using a bead. I mean, literally, folks. It's the sky's the limit. Um, these are actually not closed jump rings, Angela. They are open jump rings. I think you don't have to use an open, it could be open or closed. It doesn't really matter on this project because you're really not, there's not going to be any pressure or pulling or anything on the jump rings. They're literally just a decorative item. All right, good question. Debbie says it looks beautiful. I agree. I love this bracelet. It's so cute. I think it's the, I think it's the blue beads. It's the blue jersey agate. They're just awesome. Okay, next. It always surprises me, look, that one, one of them tends to be get a little bit longer as you go, and I'm sure it has something to do with me being crooked, but um, I don't know why that happens. All right, so we're getting close. We've got about 10 beads left. So you can see how this would be a really cool thing to just do during the lunch break. Now, I do know that um, we had already sold about 50 of these kits before the show, and there was only about uh, 60 of them remaining, 67, I think, at the beginning of the show. If you guys want to pick this up, they are available online on jtv.com. Um, and we don't usually sell kits like this, so I think it's a really big deal that they are available. Um, that's, uh, I think it's JSYT73A, and I know Julie's been kind of dropping that into the comments as we go, so you guys can pick it up. Um, Round or flat leather, this is, this is round leather that I'm using. It's a 1.5 millimeter round leather. I've done it with two millimeter, I've done it with one millimeter, I've done it with smaller beads. I've not tried it with flat leather yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, Scarwell says that's a perfect summer bracelet. I know, it's so cute, isn't it? Now, can you guys see that the end of my leather is starting to get just like a little bit um, soft here? So I'm just going to take this, uh, this is my flush cutter, I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to splice the end. It'll just make it easier for you as you go along. Next. Marina likes my bracelet that I'm wearing. Thanks, Marina. This is just literally, Marina, nine stretch bracelets. Look. And I've got basically, I did lapis, sodalite, and then some blue quartzite on that bracelet set right there and then I just ombre them a little bit. Just goes to show you don't have to work hard to make cute jewelry, right? That's stretch bracelet, this is leather, two probably easiest ways to make jewelry out there. So if you guys are just getting started today, this is a this is a great beginner project because <laughs> it doesn't require a lot of tools at all. You do not have to be closing these jump rings like I'm doing. I mean, they're, they're really fine as they are. But um, a ruler and a good cutter, like a pair of scissors, is all you have to have to do this bracelet. Cheryl says, I love this bracelet. I'm going to order several kits for my daughter's upcoming wedding for ba <gasps> Bachelorette Weekend. That's a great idea. Oh, my gosh. You know what? You just gave me such a great idea. Because my future daughter-in-law is having a shower just coming up here, I mean, like, not even a month away. And that'd be such a cute project to have for everybody to do. Because anybody, folks, can do this. I promise you. It is so, you, I mean, you're watching me. I'm literally just stringing beads. It's, it's almost kindergarten. But it looks so good. So good. That's a really good idea, Cheryl. I love it. So Julie's monitoring my the questions for me. So if you guys... 
have any more questions, please feel free to pop those in the chat. Like you can see how though I could have used two jump rings there if I wanted to. Oh, down to my last two beads. So Dana's asking, the beads are eight millimeter, what size are the jump rings? The jump rings are seven millimeter jump rings. It's definitely better to have a slightly smaller jump ring because it just does something that just kind of pulls it in just a little bit. And if they're too big, you don't get as much of a zigzag. I'm gonna pull that bracelet down there for you. See how it's nice and zigzagged? And you don't get that if you have too big of a jump ring. All right, so last jump ring popped on here. I'm gonna make one of these, uh, this one just a hair shorter, Julie, so that um, we have one eight inch with an extender and one seven and a half inch with an extender, since we're giving them away. Now, if you guys would like to be in on the giveaway, just uh, go ahead and let us know who you are and what state you're from. As long as you're, as you're in the continental United States, you are going to be able to uh, get one of these bracelets. We're just gonna put the names in a drawing and we're gonna draw one out. Final step. You want to kind of pull everything down towards the button. So starting at the end, just kind of pull your beads. And I already did this once, but you can see I'm still getting just a little bit of space there. So just pull those buttons or those beads down towards the button and fill in your space. So can you see the space I have there where I've pulled? And that also kind of creates that pretty zigzag with the jump rings. Not hard, just something that the first time you make it, you might not think to do that. And then you'll be like, gosh, I really wish I would have done that when it's stretched out. So we'll just kind of pull. You see I'm getting more space as I come towards the end. And done. So now you can see that this one is one bead shorter than that one. So this is going to be seven and a half inches. And now if you look at the end here, you see there's basically two buttonholes. So the fun thing about this is it's like it has an extender clasp on it. So um, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna go ahead and put two buttonholes on this one as well. When you get it home, if it's plenty long enough on that first button, for those of you guys who win this, you can literally just cut that piece off right there. But I'm gonna leave them so that if you get this, you can make it fit you. Okay, so final step. Is everybody watching? You ready to see how to finish it? Isn't it always funny how you see these videos and nobody ever finishes every anything? And you're like, but I, I don't know how to finish it. We're gonna show you how to finish it all during our lunch break. So I'm just literally gonna tie a knot. So take both pieces of cord, go around your two fingers, make a loop, and pull the two cords through the loop. You've probably seen a knot like that before, right? It's called an overhand knot. And then just kind of make sure you pull it up nice and tight to the beads. So there's not a lot of air between the two beads. And then the next step is to make a buttonhole. And you want that buttonhole to be big enough to fit around that button, but not so big that it's really loose. So I just kind of measure this out, and you can see I'm gonna want about a one inch loop. So same exact knot, go around your fingers like this, pull that through, ta-da! And then we'll make it tight. And it helps if you kind of fiddle, like I said, with your leather so that you don't have a big, funny knot. So just pull that. I always, before I pull it super tight, I always make sure I check and see if it's going to fit over my button. So uh, you just well want to. If you can make this with a wire. Let me check my button here really quick. I think I'm just a little bit. Nope, it's perfect. All right, so just pull that. So Donna's watching you on, on the live feed here, and she wants to know if you could make this with wire. Um. It would definitely present some issues with finishing, Donna. So it, it, that's, I, I would never say you can't do anything <laughs> because in my opinion, anything can be done. It's all about how you would finish it. So I'd have to think that through as to how you would finish it, whether you, I don't see how a button would necessarily work, but you probably could do like a hook and eye. So um, it's definitely, a jury's out on, on how it would work, but I, I, I would never tell you no, because to me, you can do just about anything. So we'll have to try that out and see if it works. Get back to me on that one, Donna. It's a good question. All right, so then I'm just basically gonna tie another buttonhole exactly the same distance so that uh, this can be made either seven and a half or eight and a half inches on your wrist. And just kind of make sure you've got it not you know too far away. Just double that little knot right there, just like so. And you can see this one's just gonna be just a hair shorter than the other one, about a half inch shorter. And then I like to kind of give it a, on the end right there, rather than just 
cutting it off, I kind of give it a little diagonal and then just trim that with my flush cutter. Using a good flush cutter in this case does help because it looks prettier, but any scissor will cut this, guys. If it's your first one, don't freak out. Get your scissors. It's fine. All right, just trim that off. And you can see I ended up with about, um, looks like about a foot of leather left over. And what I want to do with these is I'm going to make like a cute little pair of earrings or something. Never throw away your leather scraps. Never. Um, it, they would look super cute if you uh, just actually put a couple jump rings and put a bead on either end. Done and done. So there you go. That is how you make a leather sparkle bracelet on your lunch break. Um, I managed to get it done in 26 minutes. So you guys have plenty of time left um, to get back to work. <laughs> All right. So pretty easy. Any more questions from anybody? Nope, I think we're good on everything so far. All right, cool. Cool. Um, Charlotte says, I can't wait to make mine. I'm going to use purple, but I wouldn't mind receiving a free package from you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I know. Isn't free? Free is always fun. Oh, I get to draw names. Oh, I love it. All right. I've got a little extra stuff here, so I'll put that down. All right. So, so if you guys let me know who you are and where you're from, I get to draw a name. We've got the drum roll going here. Woo! That was so loud. <laughs> so my first winner... She is going to win uh, one of our bracelets. It's going to be Tanya from Virginia. So congratulations, Tanya from Virginia. <laughs> so Tanya, if you just want, I mean, I know she's going to put it, she's going to drop it into the feed, but um, jewelschoollive at jtv.com is where you send your address. Oops, one fell out. Oh, the drum roll. Um, Donna. And Donna is from Florida. So Donna is our second winner. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you so much for being here with us during our Lunch Break Live. It was lots of fun. I had a good time. I'm loving my new bracelet. I don't get to keep it, but that's I, have, I can make another one. It was really quick, right? All right. I will see you guys again for another Lunch Break and a YouTube Live. Please, please, please um, continue to watch us on JewelSchoolJTV.com or on, uh, on your TV station if you can find us. And also, we've got lots more YouTube Live coming your way. So it's going to be lots of fun. Let us know what you'd like to see. And don't forget to follow us on YouTube. Like, subscribe, ring that bell so that um, you'll always know when these live videos are coming and when all of our videos are released every week. We'll see you guys again real soon. Have a great day.